Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh here from One Track Mind, and you may notice over the course of the video that we do have a very new editing style. Be sure to let us know how you feel about it in the comment section below. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, yeah, let's hop into this interview. Oh wait, my bad, forgot to plug up the Instagram. Be sure to follow us on there for daily hip hop content. Anyways, let's get into this interview. Hey guys, it's Fed with God. I'm here with One Track Mind. I'm gonna tell you what it's like to be signed to Wiz Khalifa. See, I'm here with my man Fed the God straight out of the burp. It's Fed the God. Fed the God, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we on that north side. So, get it. first and foremost, right off the bat, um, how did you get signed to Wiz? Like, whoa, what's the story behind that? Um, I was just putting in a lot of work. Like I was working hard, very hard within the city, within the city of Pittsburgh. And um, I got on the wheels radar. Like he had first initially seen me breaking up a fight, but at that point he really didn't have no idea. Like I did music. So um, I just like put in groundwork. Like I was, I was grinding hard, like putting together my own shows, selling them out. And I just got on a radar a Taylor gang. And uh, then um, Will started to put me in a studio and uh, from there, he's saying my work ethic, he's saying I'm serious about it. And, uh, you know, I dropped another mixtape, it went crazy. I dropped a song to a loser. Then they flew me out to, uh, well, Wiz came here in October to do the pit game. Then they, um, after that, in um, January of 2020, they flew me out to LA for uh, a, long, a short stay in January. And then, uh, I did some music there, and that's how I got my deal. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, you said you were hitting uh, Will's radar after, he, you know, he saw you break up a fight. How were you hitting his radar? Like, do you know what record kind of got him onto your wave? Bobby Boucher. Damn. Okay. Okay. I dropped Bobby Boucher and it was crazy because I was just, I was everywhere in Pittsburgh. I was doing shows probably, I was doing like probably four shows a week. Sometimes I'm doing three shows in one night. I was just going crazy for real. And I was putting together my own things. And he, he just like how I moved. Like, I was just a positive person. Not really a nuisance i'm not getting in trouble at all like literally nothing bad to say about me so it was just a fresher breath here from out that's awesome, that's awesome. and you you were selling out these shows yeah easily that's great were you headlining or were you opening no nah, I, I was a headliner everyone that's crazy that's crazy yeah I, was doing my own, yeah I was doing my own shows bro i was booking myself that's wild. That's wild. Did you open for anyone during that time period before you were signed? Yeah, I opened for um, I opened for Key Glock, Lil Herb, Sada Baby, Block Boy JB, A Boogie, bro. It, it was a lot, bro. It was just like a whole. It was crazy. <laughs> and basically, like, anybody was any that was anybody that was in Pittsburgh, bro. I was there. Okay, that's fire. And like, did you have like any interaction with the artists directly? Because I know a lot of the time openers don't really get to have that kind of. Yeah, I mean. I interacted with him. They was cool. Like the, um, I had the most interaction with uh, Block Boy. He was pretty much the coolest. Um, the A Boogie thing was cool. I had seen him. We had like dressing rooms across from each other, but I didn't really. Stay. I don't really stay too long. Like, after I'm done performing, I usually leave. Okay, got it. And you signed how long ago? February 11th, 2020. Okay, so you're you're pretty you're pretty fresh on here. That's dope. That's super dope. So so um. I'm assuming via Wiz's camp, via Taylor Gang, as a like you know, as a as a label itself, you get to meet you know all the artists that are on the roster, or some of the artists that are on the roster. Um, who would you say that you have a best the best relationship with um, on the Taylor Gang roster? Uh, artist wise, Chevy, Chevy and Wiz, yeah, I, I got the best relationship with them. Like every time, every time I'm in LA, me, Chevy, and Wiz, we be knocking jams out. Deji's super cool. Social's cool, like I, I cross paths with all of them, but the best relationship music wise and just on the terms of talking, it would be with uh, Chevy and Wiz. Yeah, and what was what was it like, you know, your first time actually meeting Wiz in person? It was just like meeting like your big brother for real. Like, like he's like a lot of people have the perceptions on him, but like meeting him in person, he's just a stand up dude, but he's super cool. And it was just like he gave me so much game. He more so like wanted to he he wants to be a teacher for real. He's like a, he's a very good teacher. And he's a coach, like, like if uh, he's seen me struggling with something, he'll he'll point out, like, oh, bro, just do it this way, do it this better, like, you know, don't strain yourself. He's a he's a very good coach, like, going for music, and he just encouraged me to just like, I have a sound, I have a distinctive sound with myself, but he encouraged, me to just elevate it and take it to another level. Don't put myself in a box, because once I go to majors and everything like that, they're gonna want to see all colors. They don't want to see one color. 
Definitely, definitely. And, you know, he said he spat a lot of game to you. What would you think, what would you say is the biggest piece of advice you kind of took away from that first meeting with Wiz? Um, don't listen. Don't, like, you just got to not hear your haters and not pay attention to them because if you listen to them, then that means they got you. Definitely, definitely. And, like, you know, now that you're kind of on with the big leagues, have you met any, um, you know, popping artists out there uh, via Wiz's camp now that, you know, you're signed? Yeah, I met uh, Roddy Rich. Um, I met Make the Stallion, K Count. I met K Count, Ray Scrum, uh, Slump Jimmy, and uh, the fuck is in his name? The other one, Sway Lee. Sway Lee, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. With me, Sway Lee, and Wiz. Uh, me, Sway Lee, and Wiz and Skate actually have a picture together. Uh, we was at Nightingales. It was my first time in LA, and that's when I had the. Uh, that's when I first met the song Forty Two. Uh, we got it played in a club. The club went up. That's when I met Roddy Rich and number two. I met them all there. So they were pretty cool. Hell yeah. And do you have anything like kind of cooking in the vault with any of these artists? No. No, nothing yet? All right, cool. I mean, you know, now now that you're you're on with uh with the Wiz camp, you know what I mean? I'm sure I'm sure you'll get to that point at some point, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, very soon. I am just I'm not like a rapper really pressed to make songs with other artists. Like it would be nice, but I want it to be more of a genuine thing, like like because I know like you can just Put, put together a song just like oh these two guys are hot but it, it may not make sense so like one of those people is cool and, and that's what it is like i respect they work it's nothing against nobody but like you know i'm gonna get it my way like like you know if, if it comes it comes if it don't then i still wish everybody the best definitely definitely and like obviously i'm i'm assuming you knew this question was gonna come up but like what are the smoke sessions like <laughs> see um a lot of people don't notice about me i'm not really a smoker oh for real uh-uh, yeah, I don't really smoke. That's crazy. Like, a lot of people be like, how are you Taylor game? You don't really smoke. I'm like, I mean, I, I will smoke, but I'll, I'll smoke by myself for real. Like, because they smoke sessions is intense, bro. Like, if you're saying a cypher and shit, pay attention to my face, bro. I'm high as past. Like, I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but the first time um, when me and Wiz made the Yeah Yep song, we had a crazy smoke session, and I got a little carried away. Bro, I was put down, bro. I couldn't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the that's like the big leagues for smoking definitely definitely and like you have like that that person because for a lot of people out there like their dream person to smoke with is obviously Wiz you have that person yeah, yeah it was Wiz like I always wanted to get out with him man. and he showed me that yeah bro like you can't you can't get, get with this <laughs> it was, bro it was crazy it was so much weed going around at one time bro I'm just like yo stop please I'm, I was over there melting <laughs> and then like it, it was funny though because like once, once we was all at our peak of our hat I was super proud and I, like it, the room got quiet for like five minutes and I just was like yo I want a salad bro I need a salad well, it's five in the morning though man it was like five in the morning bro and I wanted a Caesar salad I was so high bro <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm sure that gets you in your creative element though like what would you say your best song you've made while you're you know a little bit high um, what would you say your best um, song is while you, that you made while high? Best song that I made while high would be 80s Flow or um, UFO. UFOs on Speed Racer. Hey. That's like that's like when I was high, like very high. That's that's dope. That's dope. And like speaking a little bit about Speed Racer, I know you got that uh, Wiz feature on there. I know you got the Wapo feature on there. Rest in peace. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a whole bunch of good stuff on that album. What what was your favorite recording process out of any songs on that tape? Hmm. Favorite song to record, probably Forty Two. That was like the best process because um I got challenged. Like there was a woman in the studio who challenged me. She told me the lyrics I had before I, I put the song together. She told me the lyrics was trash, but she like made me like redo the whole song. So that was the best because it was a challenge. Like everything else was more so pretty easy like the man wapo song we did that song like three years ago for real before he passed god rest his soul too um he had left a verse for me at my man's icy house we never really got to really get it on but he left that for me and then i laced it up and, um, but yeah it was a uh, 42 was the best song my favorite song to record on there just because of the challenge because it's a legendary beat with black rob and again god rest his soul so I, so I had to kill that song because you know you gotta go through clearances and stuff and if the song's not really picture perfect it's not gonna get clear for sure for sure um and you know to speak a little bit more on like recording processes and stuff like that 
um what is the biggest song that you've been in the presence of during like a studio session around it whether it was Wiz your own or somebody else um I was right next to Wiz when he did the Still Wear song that's crazy that's yeah crazy. I sat yeah, yeah I was sitting right there when he made the song <laughs> uh there was that and um Meg Thee Stallion had played us I'm a Savage before she released it she played us at a whole tape before she released it so, that's wild that's actually yeah. crazy <laughs> yeah, she got a couple. There was a couple songs that she didn't put out on her that was crazy. Like we was in her losing her mind. And you know, to speak a little bit more on like the sessions, you know, have you guys had one big Taylor Gang session where you got all the like everybody on the roster type thing? Bro, we uh not everybody yet. I still have I still have yet to meet um Ty and uh, Juicy J, but that's the only two I, that hasn't been in a session with me yet. But everybody else, bro, it be going down like. When the, when the whole gang is with us, bro, Wes will just pull up beats. I pull up beats, Chevy, Sosa, and we just play matchmaker. Like, who's going to sound good on this song? Oh, we just want to see what you can do on this song. Like, and then, bro, they be bringing through crazy producers and shit. I just be like, oh, my God, there's so much access right here. It's just like, it'd be crazy when we all together. When we all together, bro, it's unreal. Like, the Cypher we just did, it was crazy vibes, bro. That's crazy wild. Vibes. That's wild. And like you're saying they bring through like some crazy producers. Who's like the craziest or most acclaimed producer that you've worked with so far? Um, I worked with Weston what Weston Wise. He um did the song Tap with uh, Nev, Drake, and um Meek Mill. Mm -hmm. I worked with him. And then um I'm about to start working with Ronnie J. Damn. He's super dope. Yeah, I got uh, I, I, me and Wiz, we uh, me, Wiz and Chevy, we did a song on a take heave beat. So we got some heat. Last kind of question I got for you. Um who like if you had to give a piece of advice to you know the youth that are aspiring to be in the music industry what would that piece of advice be nothing's going to be given to you and if you aspire to get a deal the work doesn't get easier it gets harder because now you have deadlines you have a contract that you have to meet everything is not like what it seems and you just got to work hard like you can't expect everyone to do everything for you you have to play your part if you don't play your part then this industry is not going to be for you. And you got to learn how to sit down sometimes. Like, you got to learn how to be a team player because when, you, when you're on the label, it's not just about you. Everybody has to have their time and you have to help everybody too. So that's just one thing I got it. I can give to them. And also don't expect support. Like, as an up-and-coming artist, even if you're not to that point of getting a deal, when you're at, at that point of getting off the ground, don't expect support from your family or your friends because it's your dream. You got to make them believe in your dream before they support it they're not going like they're going to get like okay i think you can do it but once you start to grind and put the footwork in and then they see you're willing to go all all the way for it like no stops then that's when your people's is going to get behind you so if you go into that just really expecting you yourself to do it you'll be straight like you'll be super straight you can't expect nothing from nobody in this game because everything's here today and going tomorrow you know fed to god Fed to God and with one track man, you know, go get Speed Racer on Apple, Spotify, Title, Amazon, Deezer, Pandora, SoundCloud, Audio Mac, everywhere where you can listen to music at. <laughs> if you want to stream it, get it on LimeWire. <laughs> and also follow me on Instagram at Fed to God, F E D D T H E G O D. And just stay tuned. Like, stay tuned for all my updates.